Welcome to TTC Extra, a web-exclusive version of PBS's To the Contrary with Bonnie or Bay. On average, a woman working makes 77 cents for every dollar that a man makes. Recently, some supporters of closing this 23-cent wage gap celebrated when Congress reintroduced the Equal Rights Amendment. But not all women disapprove of the wage gap. Many believe the gap exists because women tend to work fewer hours than men and prefer jobs offering flexible schedule. So, Susan Allen, which is it? I think this is right. Women want to make their own choices. I have women working in my office. She just wants to work 20 hours. I beg her to work for 30 hours for me as I raise her wages. And no, I want to go, to go back to school and I have a kid at home. So it is a personal choice when you average the wage of the collected by men and compared with the women is experience, is the number of hours that you want to spend on the job and, and all the other factors. And so therefore, if, it is, if there's a 70% versus 100%, I could understand that. If the particular study, though, that came up with the 77 cent figure looked only for one year at women and men who worked full time, no part time work, and no breaks for having children. So I think this, although it's true that there's a lot of flex time desire by women, and you know, good, let's push for more flex time and more telecommuting and staying at home, it's not really what accounts for the wage gap because in this particular study, it was only apples and apples that they were comparing. And you think what accounts for it? The wage gap? It's just historic sex discrimination. I mean, they look at men and women who do the same job. They look very closely at their duties. And over time, you know, they've done the study over and over again. They pay women less. Yeah, but wait a second. There are a lot of women in positions of power now who decide wages and salaries. And I'm wondering if it's any better in those companies or companies where you have women on the boards. There aren't many of them. I, I get that part. But do those companies perform better with respect to paying women wages? I would suspect the answer is no, or we would know the answer. Uh, but look, I think the biggest response that women have had to what they may perceive as being underpaid or undervalued or overstressed is this complete explosive rise in female entrepreneurship. It is incredible. You know, 48% of women say that they would start their own businesses if they had the financial resources. It's 64% among African American women. It's 62% among younger women. So I think entrepreneurship as an aspiration is one thing, but creating and you know a what parallel else? universe to, 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 I think, overcome these gaps as you perceive them may be the real answer. And I was startled one time about a year ago while doing some research, I forget who put it together, but that the average, the, the median salary in corporate America is $75,000. The median salary for a self-employed person is $110,000 or $120,000 a year. Amen to that. So starting yes, your own yes, business is definitely the way to go. The challenge is that still the majority of jobs are in corporate America. I think you're right, and it's very encouraging to see more and more women. Well, the majority are in blue-collar America. The majority are in blue-collar America. The small no, businesses are creating most of the jobs. Yeah, more than more the, jobs. all the Fortune f companies combined. But the jobs are in the private sector, in the small businesses, yeah. but women are going in, but, into in droves. And okay. Okay, but in terms of jobs that have the benefits, that have uh, what some of the, the retirement and look at what is happening to them, like general well, voters. Well, but that's where you need to look at issues of inequity, and the fact is that women are 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 earning less than men. But we have some hopes because there's an amendment that was introduced <laughs> this this uh, 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 recently in the United States Congress to come back and debate the whole issue of amending the Constitution. That's going but there. That's two, yes, but that's already equality. Tried. That's putting. Well, but, but he's, he's putting the debate out there. He's putting the debate out there. Exactly what are the standards? What there. are the standards that we're using in order to measure discrimination in this country? But Employment, Patricia, uh, wages, insurance, but pensions. Patricia, surely, one, you, one you, sure, time, surely you want people to have the option, as many women do exercise that option, to take time out of the workforce after they have their children or to job share and all. That, that will not really take that away. Oh, that's no, no, no. This is, but this is what's going on. This does account for a lot, a lot of these gaps. Men never get to say, "Gee, I want to take six months off," or "I need to go find myself," or "Stay home with my kids," or "Start a business that might fail." Women sometimes can do that because they have men who have benefits. I mean, let's be honest here. A lot of these women are opting out of the traditional workforce. They went to Yale Law School, but they married someone from Harvard Law School, so they can afford to opt Mary out. Well, Rich. wait, wait, Mary Mary Rich, that's your conservative answer. No, that's not the conservative answer. Those women at Yale Law School are not conservative. They first be married. Except one, I, I agree with you on starting businesses, but the opt-out so-called revolution has been thoroughly debunked. It doesn't. Women are not. Women, women are not. Women are not remember opting these out. rich Fine. women. Yeah. Yeah. Who, All who right. Can. Thanks for watching TTC Extra. <laughs> Whether your views are in agreement or to the contrary, please join us next time. <laughs>